Hi, my name's Andy, and this is a video about how to um, collaborate with other people's uh, Git repositories, uh, work with other people, get code from other people using Git. Um, I think this is the last video in the series um, I'm going to uh, I'm doing about Git. So I'm going to talk about um, cloning, which is uh, getting a copy of someone else's repository, um, sending how to send in code to someone else's project. Um, how to fork uh, someone else's project, which is probably the normal way to contribute these days. Um, so let's start off by talking about cloning. So cloning is basically um, getting hold of someone else's code, but not just the current code, uh, but the whole history of their code. So here's the situation. You've basically got um, a repository, um, which I've depicted at the top here, uh, which is public, uh, which is where you're cloning from. And that will have a couple of branches on it, and then every clone uh, that gets taken from that will uh, have a copy of those branches in it, uh, which you won't be able to change, you just have a, a mirror of. And then you'll have your own branches, which are the things I've um, put in light grey. Um, one of those will probably be called master on your, in your repository, your local repository. Um, and you will take a copy of uh, the whole history and all those branches on that public repository and you'll also have your own local branches as all this diagram is supposed to show you. So to do a clone you, you use the command git clone and then you give the URL of the repository uh, um, and you can get that from whatever project you're cloning. Um, when you do it git will give you a load of information about um, what it's pulling down and once it's finished you'll have a directory that you can cd into uh, which is the, the code that you have pulled down. So in this case, let's cd into that pepper directory, which is the name of the thing we've cloned. And we've got the code. Um, you can see we're just printing out the contents of the readme.txt here. Um, and you've also got the full history. So you could do a git log and you could see exactly what's happened. You could do a git k and see all the branches and, uh, and so on. Uh, if you want to find out where you are and what's going on, um, you can type git branch to see what, what branch you're on, and you can see in this case we've cloned, we've only got this one branch from that pepper repository, that branch is called master. If we say git branch minus r, that means show me all the remote branches, and you can see you've got a new remote, um, we've got a remote called origin, so when you do a git clone it makes a remote for you, uh, which is basically a kind of record of another repository that you're keeping track of. And it calls it origin, and origin is the default remote to use for lots of commands if you don't specify which remote you care about. Um, and there's this branch called master that's part of origin. And I'm not certain what the first line of that output means, the, the one that looks like a symlink, but I think it means um, that the part, the bit of origin we're interested in is this master branch, I'm not certain. Um, and it, another way to work out what we're doing and what's going on is to type git remote and that will list all of the remotes, so all of the repositories that you're keeping track of. In this case there's only one and it's called origin. So we've done a clone. What that's done is brought down all the code from Pepper into our local directory. So our local directory has been created with all the code in it and with a dot git uh, directory inside um, which tracks, uh, which contains all the history information. But inside that .git directory we've also got information about remotes and at the moment we've got one remote defined called origin which means this is where I came from. Okay, so um, if someone then makes some, some more changes in this project that you're tracking uh, you can pull down those changes so that your mirror is up to date um, your mirror of what they've got, this remote branch because remote is really just a branch or rather a remote branch is really just a branch a uh, remote can contain several branches, in this case we've only got one. Anyway, when you do a git fetch, um, that mirror that you've got of what's going on somewhere else gets updated. Um, and that's all that happens, so nothing happens in your working directory. So what you need to do um, is update your working directory as well. And the way you do that is you do a git merge. So what you've done is a git fetch, which um, just copies everything that's happened on the remote into your copy of the remote branch so that's called origin slash master this remote branch in order to get uh, those changes into your current branch that you're on now which is just called master in your world 
you need to do git merge origin, which means um, pull from that origin slash master branch uh, any changes that have happened and merge them into my working directory. And potentially, if I've made changes here, um, that uh, that would involve some kind of complicated uh, merge. If I haven't made any changes here, um, I'm just tracking this, then this merge will happen, will be straightforward. Um, and it will say something like what it says on the screen there, fast forward, which just means it was easy to do this merge. Okay, and what I've shown you, that fetch and then merge, uh, there's one command that does both of those things for you, because that's something you often want to do, and that's called pull. So if you do a git pull, um, especially if you don't uh, specify what remote to pull from, it will just default to pull from the origin remote. So you do a git pull, and uh, in the background what it's doing is a git fetch um, to update your mirror of that repository, and then a git merge origin to merge in what it's just updated into your working tree. So now your working tree has the latest version uh, of that remote code. And that's the way you would stay up to date with a project if you wanted to be uh, using the latest version of an open source project, just get the, um, the, the URL that you need to clone from, you do a git clone, and then when you want um, more recent code, you do a git pull. And underneath that does a fetch and a merge. Okay, so let's imagine now you've been doing that, you've been working with the latest version of uh, their code, and now you've got an idea of something you want to change or fix in their code. What's the best way to do that? Well, one way is to send them a patch. Uh, by email or something like that. And Git makes that very nice and easy. So let's have a look at um, that readme file that we pulled down from this uh, this Pepper repository and we'll make some changes in it. We'll get rid of that word fictitious. And we'll do a commit. So we're doing a git commit minus a minus m which means commit everything I've changed. And here's the change set description so you don't need to open an editor. So that commit's gone into our local repository history but no one else has got it yet, and we want to send it to everyone else by email. So what we can type is git format patch, which means make me a patch that's formatted, ready for giving to someone else. And the, what format patch does is it takes the place in history where you want to start, and it will make one patch for every commit that's happened since that point in history. So head is the very latest thing that's happened, and head with a little hat next to it means the thing before the very latest thing that's happened. Uh, which means that we'll get exactly one patch um, created for the one commit that we've done. Um, so that, um, in more general terms, if you wanted to uh, format a patch with multiple things in it, um, you could use git log to find out the names of the commits that you wanted to start at, and you could also say where you want to stop at as well, so you can make only the patches you care about. Um, and what git will do is make this file called 0001 make it real dot patch. Um, in the local directory, which is a, a patch that you can send to other people, basically containing what you did in that change, um, that latest change. So head hat means start not from now, but from the one before now. Uh, okay, so if you open up that file, you'll see it basically looks like an email message. And if you've got an email client that can accept that as it is, um, you can just open that up and send it, as long as you say who it's to. Um, and inside that email message, there's a patch. So if your if your email client doesn't want to do that, uh, just open up that file and copy and paste that patch into an email, or attach this whole file um, to an email, um, and people will be able to use it directly and uh, feed it to their patch command on their machine and um, update their code and have a look at what you've done directing their working repository, working tree. Okay, so something else you might want to do, um, especially in this day and age, uh, is forking. So there was a time not so long ago in the open source world where um, to fork a project or the code of a project was the absolute worst insult. It meant that you, the relationships completely breaking down, broken down between you and the maintainer of the project, um, and you were making a fork and going off on your own without them. Uh, these days, it kind of means the opposite. It means that you want to be involved with their projects and contribute. And the main reason for the change in that word, in the meaning of that word, is that Git makes it so easy to merge between forks. Um, so now, the best way of working with someone else on, on a project is to make your own fork of their project 
and then send pull requests to them to say, look, can you pick up these pieces of, these pieces of code that I've committed into my fork? Can you pull them across into the main fork or the main repository? Um, so how would you do that? Well, normally you do it with quite a lot of help from a site like GitHub. Let me try and explain it a little bit. So basically, um, for purely social reasons, there'll be one repository that's considered the um, the main one, which is the one I've depicted at the top here. Um, it's actually equivalent to all the other public um, clones, and they could all be hosted on GitHub or somewhere else. Um, but because it's the first one or the one that the project maintainer runs or something, it's considered the central one, the one that you kind of care about getting your stuff into. Um, and then there'll be a whole load of other people um, with clones of that repository and they will all be publicly visible to other people so you can track um, if there's someone doing changes that you particularly like and you want to track what they're doing before it goes into the main release or maybe it doesn't even ever go into the main release and you want it um, you can track one of these other public clones if you want to contribute to a project what you do is make your own public clone, uh, and on a site like GitHub, you just click on fork this repository, um, and it'll make you a public clone of uh, that repository, and then you can keep it up to date automatically or manually uh, based on changes that have gone into the one you cloned. You can also pull changes from other people who've got other clones. Um, and then what you do is you do a git clone of your public clone, um, and pull that code down to your actual machine that you're working on. You work in that in that private clone of your public clone. Uh, when you're ready, you send the changes up to your public clone, and then you send a pull request, which means you ask the person who runs the the main repository whether they want to take the stuff that you've done and put it into put it into theirs. So um, let's imagine we've made some changes in our local repository. So we do a git status and git says your branch is ahead of the origin by one commit. Um, so there's nothing nothing in your working tree, but in your current repository you've committed some stuff into history um, that's only in your local history. So one thing has happened here that has not happened in your public repository. So to get it to your public repository you do a git push. And uh, assuming your public repository hasn't got changes from somewhere else or something that conflict with what you've got, you should be able to just do a git push and it all gets sent up um, to your public clone. Now if you do a git status, you can see there's no, you're not ahead of um, origin anymore. Everything is fine and uh, as it should be. And then you can make a pull request, which means emailing or clicking a button in GitHub or a similar site to say, um, I've got some changes, they're in this public repository, um, please will you look at them and if you like them, pull them into your repository. Um, if the owner of that repository likes what you're doing, she'll pull your changes across into her public repository and then, of course, as part of her normal development, she'll then pull them down into her private repository and have them in her working tree. And at some point, probably, a release will be made from her or her clone of her public repository or someone else's and your code will be in there. Um, so that's really it for how you work with other people in Git. There is a scenario that I haven't discussed a great deal which is where multiple people have cloned one public repository and they're all pushing into it one at a time. Uh, it's not particularly something you'll come across in most uh, open source projects, most open source projects that I've seen these days use the GitHub way of everyone, everyone working in a fork. Um, but you actually have seen the commands today to cover that scenario as well. Um, you just clone and then pull and push. Uh, the problem comes when different people are trying to push things that conflict. Um, it's harder to work with, more like an, an old-fashioned, ordinary uh, source control system where you have to uh, resolve those conflicts and if you push something bad everyone suffers. So I recommend working in this in this way where everyone's got their own fork and GitHub makes that really easy. Um, and that's it for this series on Git. Uh, do check out the um, the YouTube my YouTube page. There's videos and all kinds of things, programming and Scheme, JavaScript, uh, how to write a game for Raspberry Pi. Uh, follow me on Twitter and I mostly just tweet about blog posts and videos that I've made. 
I follow my blog where I talk about uh, things programming related and most of them, uh, post up my videos. Uh, if you'd look at, like to look at some of my open source projects, check out artificialworlds.net and um, I'll, uh, I'll see you soon for a different series. Have fun.